But what's a Lovecraftian horror rogue like without monsters and human adversaries? Sunless Sea has a plethora of them from lowly five-man boats to leviathans that prowl the deep. This top-down steampunk survival horror game is replete with dangerous denizens. This top 5 deadliest Sunless Sea monsters and other bosses guide is split into the following sections. 1. The core of this guide. The top 5 deadliest opponents you can encounter in this game. 2. Bonus section. The top 3 deadliest bosses in the game. 3. Bonus section. Special mentions. The last section covers 3 monsters that didn't make the cut. They're huge, they're yes, deadly, but with the right equipment, they're reduced to so much resource pools that you can mine from time to time. Also, several things I want to point out. 1. Needless to say, this guide contains spoilers. 2. As this game is a permadeath one, I don't want to tangle with the strongest bosses in this game just for the sake of data gathering. Hence, all the clips you see in this guide is of me with late game stats and equipment. Hence, every battle you see in this vid is very lopsided. However, with mid-game stats and equipment, some of these encounters will be very difficult, if not downright impossible. 3. This guide only discusses enemies. It does not go into detail about locations, loot, and tips. About tips, I do have a guide about how to use aft weapons. A YouTube card pointing to that video should appear in the upper right corner of this video right about now. The top 5 deadliest opponents you can encounter in Sunless Sea. In ascending order, here are the top 5 deadliest monsters you can encounter in Sunless Sea. The list also includes one ship. 1. The Boundling. Trailing behind the other 4 in this list, the Boundling is no less terrifying. I've noticed this monster as one of the shortest attack cooldowns in the game, attacking more often than other hostiles in this game. Come to think of it, maybe that's why the devs came up with the name. It attacks with frightening speed. In my experience, this monster dishes out an average of 18 damage. If you encounter this one when you only have a 75 hull point vessel, 45 hits and you're sunk. Unless you're super confident, stay away until you've acquired better weapons and a stronger vessel. Luckily though, it's not as common as the weaker monsters and doesn't surface always prowling the seabed. So long as you submerge, you won't ever encounter this one. 2. Wreck Ship More common than the other opponents in this list, wreck ships to first time players resemble wreckage that have settled on the bottom of the Z. Approach one however and it starts to power up and arm itself. If you've managed to buy the Forced Glass Corvette, tangling with these insidious camouflage black guards is a risky affair. If you've a weaker vessel, run. More durable than the Boundling by a full 140 hit points, wreck ships are one of the considerable threats in the deep. Their weapon is also deadlier than the Boundling's ram attack, able to deal an average of 24 points of damage. They can sink weaker vessels with 3 to 5 shots, and the fact that the weapon's ranged means running away from these derelicts is still not a guarantee. Wreck ships are very agile, pivoting this way and that, making it hard to avoid their weapon's firing arc. This frenetic movement, however, sometimes renders wreck ships inaccurate, so dueling with one is a very dicey affair. These stealthy opponents, though, hold the distinction of having killed two of my captains in my last three runs, making them the deadliest opponent in the early to mid-game phases. 3. Milliner Bats Even more resilient than the Boundling, Milliner Bats are 100 hit points more resilient than Rack Ships. They can only deal an average of 18 points, but their resilience make them a very dangerous foe. Also, they're a swarm, making it difficult to gauge where the center of the collection is. It makes it very hard to estimate a safe distance of engaging such a flock if you want to be at the very periphery so you can escape if the encounter proves disastrous. Luckily, they only swarm in the area around Varchas, Varkas, I don't know how to pronounce that, making them one of the rare monsters to encounter. 4. Blue Prophets Dishing only an average of 15 damage and weaker compared to the bats by 60 hit points, the Blue Prophets have nonetheless managed to steal the second most dangerous monster slot on this list because of these things. 1. They're much more common than the Milliner Bats swarming around nearly a full half of the southern edge of the game's map, and 2. 
they have a much shorter attack cooldown compared to the bats, making them deal substantially larger amounts of damage over time. Like the bats, they're also a swarm, which makes them more problematic than most monsters. 5. Thalat And finally, we come to the honcho on this roster, the dreaded Thalat. A titanic horrific mass of flesh and feeding tendrils, this leviathan is truly to be feared even if one has mid-game items. Its ram attack is nothing to write home about, I've observed that it averages 16 points of damage, but its range attack, a green colored gob that it expels from its mouth, does an alarming average of 26 to 32 points of damage. Moreover, unlike projectile weapons of enemy ships, I have never seen this attack miss. Coupled with this is its prodigious amount of hit points. Certainly, 420 points is nothing to scoff at, and trying to kill a Thalat is very inconvenient for even seasoned commanders and certain doom for Greenhorn ones with only a 10-man steamer under their command. Sunless Sea, the top 3 deadliest bosses. 1. Alcius Class Corvette Though its lethality falls off rapidly in the early game, one has to mention the 16-man corvette that plies the water off Nuncio and Demo Island. Because of the promise of copious amounts of loot provided by an early game quest, players will usually be enticed to hunt for this ship early on, making the encounter a very hairy affair. Like the wreck ships, this vessel has a considerable rotation speed and staying out of its firing arc will demand every ounce of your navigation skills. However, as mentioned, in the mid-game, such a ship can easily be taken down. It's only because of the early game quest, when players only have deplorable equipment, that players will be more than enticed to tangle with an LCS class corvette. 2. The Irrepressible Moves like a wrecked ship, but deals an average of 25 to 30 points of damage. Due to it behaving like a wrecked ship though, in the late game, it's not as inconvenient as the other 4 monsters on the first list. Sometimes you can get away with it not having dealt any damage to you. However, in the early to mid game, you should avoid this submarine unless you've acquired beefier ships and deadlier guns. 3. Eater of Names The name itself is alarming, but more so its stats. With 700 hit points and 3 guns, the Eater of Names is not something you should tangle with unless you've a quest. The only reason why I haven't included this fearsome ship on the first list is because of the following reasons. 1. It's very rare, haunting only a very specific area of the map. 2. You're not forced to tangle with it unless you've a quest. 3. Its loot is deplorable, so again, you're not really obligated to fight the thing unless your storyline demands it. Addentum, the constant companion. I've actually finished this video and my wife observed that, hey, did you include that spider thing you were so scared of? While I was disappointed that I forgot to include it at first, the reason why my mind chose to ditch this boss from the list I was cobbling up is simple. Despite its name, it's so easy to evade the constant companion. Yes, it's not limited to a single location. Yes, it is without a doubt one of the scariest if not the scariest boss in the game. However, once you realize that you have to fulfill two requirements for it to actually appear, being underwater and having a high enough terror level, you can actually choose not to encounter this thing. Once I've noted these conditions, poof, in the more than 230 hours I've been playing this game, I've only encountered this thing about 5 times. And I think 3 to 4 of those encounters were from a time wherein I was still an inexperienced Sunless Sea player. The couple of times I encountered it later on, I just simply surfaced, problem solved. So yeah, the constant companion is somewhat of a mixed bag. Scary, yes, but are you largely safe from it? Also yes. I noticed these things appear when you submerge with over 60 terror points or thereabouts. I haven't had one jump on me when I was hovering near the 50 terror mark. Its stats are impressive though. While it has a middling range attack, it has 750 hit points and rams you for an average of 40 points of damage. Stay away. It has quite the rewards though. 
I won't spoil it for you, but if you feel your equipment is enough to weather out the punishment it dishes out, I say go for it. It's worth it. Good luck! Special Mentions The creatures detailed on this list are considerable threats, but their glacially slow speeds make them very easy to kite once you've upgraded your engines and even aft gun. These additions make them very easy prey. 1. Lifeberg a ran attack that does a jaw-dropping 30 points of damage is quite horrific to Rattus Faber assistants, but as mentioned, life birds are slow. Just don't close in to ramming range and you should be fine. Should being the operative term. 2. Lorn Flukes Colossal floating sea urchins. Lorn Flukes are one of the few loot-heavy monsters in the game, letting you net 3 secrets and an expensive fluke core if you're lucky. However, do not try to kill one of these if you're low on hit points and or your terror level is high. Its ram attack does a whopping 30 points of damage and its AOE attack causes your terror level to rise by 10 points. It also has 600 hit points making an encounter a protracted affair. It's very kiteable though and so long as you know how and where to reduce your terror level, taking down one shouldn't be a risky affair. For a Sunless Sea guide on how to reduce terror, a YouTube card pointing to that guide of mine should be appearing on the upper right corner of the screen right about now. 3. Mount Nomad This 1000 hit point colossus is the tankiest of all Sunless Sea denizens. Again, you can easily kite this titan, making such an encounter an easy affair. Do not be complacent though, even though you can easily avoid getting rammed by its 80 point physical attack you can't dodge its AOE ability. The latter does an average of 40 points of damage and raises your terror level by 10. Like hunting Lauren Flukes, make sure you have a low terror level and know how and where to reduce your terror level. Also, stock up on Rattus Faber assistance. 10 should be enough. Anyway, its AOE attack cooldown is pretty large though, so so long as you have a 300 hull point vessel, you should be fine. If you've only a cutter or a smaller vessel, just make sure you've the weapon Icarus in black and one to two doomed monster hunters. For a guide on how to kill Mount Nomad, a YouTube guard pointing to that guide of mine should be appearing on the upper right corner of the screen right about now. Just be careful when harvesting loot from this titan though. If you fail, the event will kill one to three of your Zailers. And that's it, the deadliest monsters and ships in the roguelite open world game Sunless Sea. This has been Retroburn and if you like this video please comment, like, share and or subscribe though doing all four would be awesome. Stay cool, stay frosty. See you in the next vid.